Good day. Welcome to Westchester Talk Radio, westchestertalkradio.com. I'm John Marino, and we are made possible by our good friends over at Entergy, the Indian Point Energy Center, supporting our communities through April of 2021. Lipolis Electric, don't be left in the dark. You get Lipolis. Also, Hightower Westchester Fiduciary Advisors at Hightower. They manage your wealth to a fiduciary standard and White Plains Hospital, special thanks to all of our friends over at White Plains Hospital for all they've done throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. We are produced by Shark Creative. Welcome to On the Beat in Westchester. And we are joined by Dr. Orhan Hockley. Dr. Orhan Hockley is an associate dean at Manhattanville College in Purchase here in Westchester. And he is also a nurse practitioner, too. He is on the front lines in the battle against the COVID. The vaccines have been out for about a month already. A lot of dispute about how those vaccines should be distributed. Dr. Hockley, first of all, thank you for joining us here on Westchester Talk Radio. And secondly, how are vaccinations going across Westchester? Uh, thank you, John, for having me. Um, I'm doing fine and the vaccinations are going well, but of course it could be uh, faster, uh, but uh, we'll probably get into that. What do you have to do to line up to be in line to get a vaccine right now? Uh, right now, um, uh, Governor Cuomo obviously extended the um, eligibility criteria to uh, people 65 and over and also people with uh, chronic uh, conditions, comorbidities. Uh, there are websites that you can go and uh, check your eligibility and sign up for one of those sites that administer um, vaccines. Before that, it was only hospitals because um, the first one was uh, Pfizer, obviously, that needed to be uh, kept in a very, very um, you know, cold uh, places that maybe uh, other uh, uh, places may not have facility to do. So therefore, they um, uh, delivered all those vaccinations to the hospitals. And obviously, hospital staff and frontline workers uh, lined up first and they got their uh, first shots. I actually got my second shot uh, last uh, Sunday. You did? I did. How do you feel? How do you feel? Oh, I feel great. Uh, I feel great. I got my first shot, um, I think it was December 20, I want to say. And I didn't really feel a thing, but I did feel obligated really ethical um, obligation to take a picture of myself and then put it on social media and just urge people to follow the signs, not rumors or conspiracy theories. Because what do you say to those, I'm glad you brought up conspiracy theories. Sure. What do you say to those, and I know a number of people who say, I'm not getting a vaccine. <laughs> online about this report and that report, et cetera, why you shouldn't get it. And I'm tempted to start to message some of my friends back and I wouldn't like to do this or give them a call and say, smarten up. How do we stop this? How do we get everybody vaccinated? Do we need I am, a mandate? I am, uh, I am so glad that you brought that up. I do not believe in uh, mandating things. I believe in educating and making people uh, make their own mind uh, on decision, uh, informed decision. I think as educators and healthcare providers, our job is to inform people. And if you were one of my patients, come to my office and says, hey, I don't want to get it because I heard this happens, that happens. My uh, answer would be, or I feel it's rushed. My uh, answer would be, one, this, uh, th obviously, this is a new technology. Before we used, you know, in, uh, you get the piece of wires, you inactivated it, and you, you give it to people. Now, uh, we're using mRNA uh, technology, which basically uh, you're getting something put it in your uh, arm, and then that um, uh, vaccine tells your body how to fight against COVID if you were exposed to, which mm -hmm. is great, uh, cutting edge, and therefore we do have actually up to 94, 95% uh, percent of protection. Mm -hmm. Those numbers you bring up, they seem to be even more effective than the flu vaccine. That I is correct. Really read, but right now they seem to be more effective than the flu vaccine. That is correct because, again, uh, uh, as I said, flu vaccine uses the old technology, and uh, you're basically uh, getting the um, 
uh, the strains that caused flu a year before, and then you're uh, making an educated guess what uh, strains you want to protect people against. Obviously, uh, sometimes you get 70, 80 percent, sometimes you get 50 percent, uh, but 94, 95 percent is amazing. I mean, it decreases the risk uh, by a lot, 95 percent we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Does this lead to the question of now we can go back and change the technology of the flu vaccine? <laughs> I, well, here's the thing. Uh, I do believe that uh, researchers are actually working on different technologies in uh, producing uh, vaccines. Not only that, but actually uh, curing um chronic diseases by using uh, mRNA technology. I'm not going to get into that. I am not a um, scientist uh, making vaccines, uh, but my uh, expertise is uh, public health. Mm-hmm. So when we get there, I will bring up the um, researchers. I will read their studies, and then I will inform my patients and my community accordingly. Not that I'm proposing that there be a mandate that everybody get vaccinated, but how do we ensure because COVID, see, obviously, not even seems to be, obviously, is much more dangerous than the regular everyday flu. And I hate to put it in those terms, but to make sure we have maximum effectiveness, maximum coverage for all age groups, all demographics, how do we do this without mandating that everybody gets a shot? You talk about leaving it up to people, doing their own research, learning on their own. But aren't we taking that a bit too far and exposing too many people by not mandating that everybody gets a shot, like it or not? Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, Jen, you're bringing up a very good point, to be honest with you. Uh, yes, I do uh, have friends in uh, different places uh, suggest maybe we should. But again, uh, like how I said the other day to a reporter from New York Post, um, I believe if you inform uh, the public and if you gain their trust, we will get where we need to be. Mm-hmm. Mandating will never get you where you need to uh, you need to go. And yet I think despite looking at evidence that says the vaccine is good, there still are going to be holdouts, I would think, no matter Well, what. there's always going to be. Uh, I believe that. I mean, I, I know that uh, there are a lot of people uh, who do not want to get uh, an MRA uh, uh, vaccine or they don't want to get um, polio vaccine. Yeah, Yes, there are people out there. But again, as educators or healthcare workers, we are going to work tirelessly to uh, convince people, tell people where the science is, give the numbers, give the truth, and then uh, change the habit of following uh, rumors and conspiracy theories. That's where I stand as an educator and um, healthcare professional. Orhan Hotley is an associate dean at Manhattanville College in Purchase, a nurse practitioner here in Westchester. You brought up the New York Post article where you were quoted just a few days ago, and the article was about distributing the vaccines, where in some locales across this country, even in Great Britain, they may do this nationally now, just give everybody the whole shebang, everything in one shot instead of coming back for a second shot. And you talk about how that may not be the right thing to do. Um, Thank you for bringing that up as well. Yes, uh, in my opinion, that might not be the best idea. First of all, I got to start with this. I don't think our problem right now is how many vaccines we have. The problem is slow vaccination rate. I mean, as of today, a federal government says that they delivered 31 million doses of uh, COVID-19 vaccine, right? But we were able to give only 11 million of them. So that alone tells me that our problem right now is the vaccination rate. Don't forget, our nation, our world is under attack by this vaccine. And we should have wartime vaccination mentality. I want to see stadiums are turning into a mass vaccination centers. I want to see army of vaccinators. I want to be able to educate public about these vaccines. This is how we're gonna we gonna be able to get out of this. But if you ask me, should we delay the second dose so more people can get vaccinated? Should we deploy all the uh, vaccines uh, federal government has it? Well, my take on this is a little bit different than uh, most uh, out there. Well, my thing is one, as I said before, um, delaying second dose might be a problem because Pfizer itself went out and said that 
hey, we did not evaluate the effectiveness with different dosing schedules. That means they do not have data on effectiveness beyond 21 or 28, if it is Moderna, uh, with only one dose. So my thing is, yes, the companies uh, told us that we are going to manufacture enough vaccines for you. But what if they don't? What if my patient comes back on the 21st day and then says, all right, I'm here to get my second dose. And I say, oops, I don't have it. And then I'll say, come next week or two weeks, or a month from today. What's going to happen then? I don't know the effectiveness of the second dose after a delayed, uh, after a delayed second dose. What am I going to do? Am I going to start from the first dose again, or I'm going to give you the second uh, dose? The reason I don't tell you, I mean, I, the reason I'm telling you I don't know, because we do not know. The uh, virus is very new, and so is the vaccine. And we did not really evaluate the different doses or mix and matching different companies. So that kind of makes me a little bit nervous of sending everything out, not guaranteeing uh, the second dose. Obviously, uh, Trump and uh, upcoming Biden administration made the decision to deploy everything. I understand because they actually operate on more information than us. And I am just hoping that they actually really secured those doses uh, to be deployed when the time comes. I've seen numbers and reports that say the first vaccine provides up to 90% protection after two weeks. Are those numbers accurate or is it still too early to tell? Um, uh, I have seen the studies as well myself. Uh, the uh, report that I saw was about Pfizer Biotech uh, vaccine, and it said after the uh, 10th day of the first dose, the protection can go up to 80%. I did not see 90. Mm -hmm. I've seen 90. Up, yeah. Oh, you have. Uh, I, I have seen 80s. Uh, so therefore, a lot of people came out and said, hey, actually, we have uh, up to 80% protection. Why don't we just give the first dose, and then worry about it later. Well, as a nurse practitioner or as an educator, I always tell my students, I don't operate on assumptions. I operate on um, the data and truth. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I'm a little bit skeptical, say, send it all out. Uh, we'll see how it goes. If you get a particular type of vaccine, let's say you get Moderna the first time around, you're supposed to get Moderna the second time around. Let's say you go back for that second shot. Moderna is not available, but something else is. Is there a danger in taking the second shot from someone else? Oh, uh, that's uh, the short answer is I don't know. But the, if I want to tell you more, I have uh, listened to uh, the uh, CEO of BioNTech, uh, the company that actually uh, found this uh, vaccine. Um, and also Dr. Anthony Fauci said the same thing. At this time, uh, they do not recommend uh, doing that. Mm -hmm. So but a lot of, course, of this is still developing even as these vaccines are being given out. Nicely put, exactly. We are learning as we go. Don't forget, uh, vaccines takes five, six years, 10 years sometimes to develop and learn and everything about it. What, what happened here is all of a sudden we got hit by this um, monstrous virus and then we started losing fellow, uh, fellow Americans. And then we had to do something about it. And then this came up. And then, of course, initial studies said that it's effective and it's not dangerous. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. And then that's how they got their uh, emergency authorization use. Mm -hmm. Is there any read yet on how long these vaccines work for, for example, everybody is having a new experience, going to get a vaccine for the first time, then a second time. How much protection for how long is in there, in that first dose and in that second dose combined? Mm -hmm. um, another very common question that I get from my patients and my students as well. Um, we don't know yet. But uh, based on uh, what we know about the virus and the vaccines and the techniques, uh, I believe Moderna came out and said that at least for a year and Pfizer said for two years. But again, we don't know. They're still collecting data. Mm -hmm. So this might be something we have to do annually like a flu shot. Could be. Could be. Uh -huh. I see Kevin uh, Durant on the Nets who was COVID positive back last April, and he was quarantined for about a week recently, allowed to play again. He was in contact with somebody that 
had COVID apparently or tested positive for COVID. Now, throughout the period since he recovered since last April, he's been producing antibodies in all the tests ever since. And yet the NBA, National Basketball Association rule, is that if you test COVID positive, well, if you come in contact with somebody who has it down the road, even though you've recovered, you have to quarantine anyway. Do the antibodies, whether or not you produce them after having COVID matter in how you get a vaccine or if you should get a vaccine or this is across the board, even if you've had COVID, go get the vaccine anyway? Uh, it is it is a little bit uh, more complicated than that, but I do agree with the decision that they made. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, you just recovered from it and you produ- uh, produced enough antibodies or you just got the vaccination or not you can still, um, you know, give the virus to, uh, expose a virus to others. Um, to your question, um, when you get exposed an antigen to your system, your body obviously start producing this antibodies, right? How long uh, you are going to have enough antibodies not to get sick? Uh, we don't know. What we know is as the time goes, the level of antibodies goes down and down. Uh, the assumption is three months, you should be fine. Therefore, uh, people who recovered from, uh, I'm sure you've see, uh, you heard it, and also when President Trump didn't get the uh, vaccine, I don't know if he actually got it now, but uh, he said, oh, I just got, uh, got um, COVID-19, so they say I shouldn't really get it. Well, I understand because for um, if you just recovered from COVID-19, uh, they say, you got to wait at least 90 days because you're basically, I don't want to say immune, but you're basically the chances of getting severely sick is really, really low. Uh, that's, that's, that's where we are. So the vaccine could clash with the antibodies in you then? I wouldn't say that. Uh, I would say that if you are already, uh, if you don't have risk of having a severe disease, uh, maybe you should wait a little longer. Mm-hmm. The American Hospital Association says that to achieve broad immunity by midsummer of 2021, we need to inoculate at least 1.8 million people every day between now and the end of May. We have President Biden, who promises to deliver 100 million vaccine shots during his first 100 days in office. Is all of this doable or is it pie in the sky? It is doable. Is doable. How? Doable. Um, See, here's the thing. I would actually go on and say that one million is not enough. We should do actually two uh, million a day. Because don't forget, um, we do have the structure of vaccinating enough people at uh, enough pace. Uh, It's just all about coordination. The federal and the local authorities need to coordinate uh, you know, delivering the uh, vaccination, getting into vaccination sites, and then uh, lining up people to get vaccinated. That's why when I said it earlier, I want this wartime vaccination mentality. That's literally what I meant. Like, this is um, wartime mentality. Uh, start making mass vaccination centers, deploy all the vaccines. And also, uh, the Moderna vaccine is really easy to uh, store. So uh, you can actually uh, deliver those vaccines to like um, CVS or, you know, uh, all these uh, companies and even physician offices, they can actually help with uh, vaccination effort as well. If you really think about how many uh, pharmacies and physician offices and uh, companies uh, that can do this, if you really think about that, it's not that ambitious. It mm-hmm. just requires coordination. How did we, in New York City, vaccinate 6 million people in one month back in the late 40s against smallpox, and we can't get this done now? How could that possibly be with the technology, the distribution we have today, 80 years after? It's really hard for me to speak to that since I wasn't here back then, and I don't know how we did back then, to be honest with you. What I can speak to is... um, it takes coordination. Just have the right people, the right structure, and we will do it. Mm-hmm. Now, pop-up testing is something oh. that New York State might go to. They've mm-hmm. used it at a Buffalo Bills playoff game just a few days ago. 6,700 fans allowed in in Buffalo. 
a little over 7,000, about 7,200 on site when you include everybody needed to make a game in the NFL happen. And you had to be tested before you walked in, pop-up testing. A little under 200 people came up positive. New York State Health Department looks at this and says this might be something we can use everywhere at any kind of a venue and start to reopen a bit more with the arts, with theaters, et cetera, with sports events. What do you think about this pop-up testing idea at this point? Uh, Obviously, as a healthcare provider, I am open and I will always open to new ideas because this is a team effort, right? But um, I... I'm a little bit skeptical about that too. First of all, I did look up that article and see what they've done. I'm not sure what type of test they use. It's it's pop up and uh, I'm guessing uh, they use the uh, rapid testing. Um, Little background, we have two types of testing, right? We have the um, rapid testing, which looks at the viral activity and then you get your results in 15 minutes. And you have the PCR looks at the genetic, genetic material. You get your result in two to three days. The bad thing, uh, the good thing with uh, rapid is yes, you get it in 15 uh, minutes, but the sensitivity is uh, a lot less than PCR. Up to some estimation, we can miss 16% of active infection cases. If you calculate that to how many fans we may have in a stadium, that's a risk. And with the PCR, yes, it is sensitive, it is good, I like it, but you need at least four or five days for a virus to replicate enough to show up on the uh, test. So my thing is, if you uh, got exposed to COVID-19 day or two days before the um, uh, game and you get tested, even though you have the virus and it's actually replicated and you can give it to others, but it may not actually turn positive when you get yourself tested. Mm-hmm. That obviously, and you're asymptomatic because virus did not have enough time to cause the disease. And you're like, I'm all good and everything. And next thing you know, you are actually exposing a lot of people to COVID-19. So that's, that makes me a little bit um, skeptical about this point. Getting two doses of vaccine, you get the first dose and then you are supposed to come back in about three weeks or 28 days after. What if you miss that and something comes up and you just can't come in for six weeks? Do you have to go back to square one, get re-vaccinated again, step one? Oh, uh, I I, I wouldn't say that. I would just say if it is a day or two, just go and uh, show up and try to get your second dose. Mm-hmm. But like uh, like how I said earlier, uh, different dosing uh, schedules are not really evaluated. Effectiveness of different dosing schedules are not really evaluated. So I wouldn't know. But uh, I don't think a day or two would uh, make a big difference. Mm-hmm. Congressman Adriano Espaillat, who represents Washington Heights in Upper Manhattan, he was among that group of Congress people who had to take cover in the attack on the Capitol a few days ago down in Washington, D.C. A handful of Congress people have tested positive since then. You had people in Congress, House of Representatives, you had senators, you had staff people all cramped together in close quarters for an extended period of time. So somebody might have been positive in there, maybe not wearing a mask, transmitted to others. Congressman Espaillat was amongst that group. He got vaccinated about a month ago. A few days ago, he got another vaccination again, his second vaccination, and he's come up positive. Mm -hmm. So he's gotten his two shots. Even though the second shot just occurred, he came up positive. Is this something to keep an eye on? Do we, after that second shot, do we not walk out of the facility, the medical facility, and say, all right, I'm okay, I'm totally okay, I'm 100% protected, that this has to still, the second shot kick in needs time to do that? You're absolutely right, John. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, you need at least seven days after the second uh, dose uh, to really uh, get to 95%. Mm-hmm. And my guess is, I don't know when uh, the Congress uh, Congresswoman, is that right? Congressman, yep. Uh, Congressman. Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, I don't know when Congressman uh, got his... Um, First shot. Uh, vaccination. Uh, how many days it passed from the second vaccination? So if it is within that 10 days, uh, really, 
uh, the immune system didn't really get enough time to get all that work and then didn't get 95% of protection. Mm-hmm. Um, therefore, when I speak to my patients, I always tell them, look, I'm just vaccinating you now, but you need at least seven days to get that maximum 95% protection. Mm-hmm. But therefore, don't think that I'm all good now. I don't need mask. I don't need anything. I'm just going to start hanging out with large crowds. That would be a bad, bad decision. And that might be uh, the case here. Another thing is, I was thinking about that. I saw that article as well. Um, don't forget, even after the seven day, we have 95 uh, for uh, Pfizer, 94 for Moderna uh, percent protection. It still gives you like five, six percent of not being protected, right? That's right. extremely low, obviously, but there is still chance. Mm-hmm. So um, the thing is, yes, even if you get it, uh, the symptoms are not going to be that bad. You're not going to have a very severe illness. That's the beauty of this vaccine. Uh, and you're getting uh, sick, uh, the chance of you getting sick after uh, 10 days, yes, extremely low, but there is still risk. Therefore, unless we reach a herd immunity, I know Dr. Fauci is uh, moving the uh, go, uh, goalpost uh, a lot lately because we started. Right, he's moved that and, number around a bit. Yeah. So um, uh, he. Well, he's a man of numbers. He's uh, he's a scientist. He looks at the numbers and he tries to interpret numbers and then try to draw conclusions. That's that's what we do. And then he looked at the early numbers. He said, well, 70 would be a good idea. Now he's 80 and at 90. Unless we reach herd immunity, how are we going to know? The um, infection rate will go down. Hospitalization uh, rate will go down. Mortality rate will go down. And then we'll say, I guess we're fine now. And slowly restrictions are going to be lifted. So uh, vaccination or not, please do not let your guard down. Not just yet. But in the horizon, I'm guessing maybe the third quarter of this year, we're going to have some relief. Uh Glad you brought that up about not letting your guard down. We hear that if you get the vaccine, you still should mask up. You still should social distance. So if we're getting the vaccine... How much time do we need to stop needing to social distance as much or maybe walk around freely without a mask again? How much time, in your estimation, might that take? I I really cannot estimate that. But what I can tell you is this. Um, Vaccination is protecting you, not people around you. You can, uh, yes, as I said before, the chances of you getting sick is extremely low now. And even if you do probably symptoms are not going to be as bad. But don't forget, if you're exposed, most likely to your nose, the viral uh, viruses will, are going to be there. Try to get in, try to replicate. But of course, the vaccine is not going to let them, but it's going to stay there. And every time that you sneeze or you cough, it, you, you may actually expel them before you shed them away. So that, you can get the shot and yet expose other people still. That is absolutely what I'm trying to say, yes. Which is not really talked about. Yes. And hopefully we will talk. And therefore, I am talking to my friends, my patients. And thank you for having me. That's why I'm here as well. Mm -hmm. Incredible. So how far along do you think we are right now in getting towards that herd immunity? Are we making at least enough progress in your mind? We hear all the stories about there's not enough vaccine out there. We're not getting things distributed in New York State the right way or in other states around the country the right way. It's not just a New York thing. This is national. Are we at a point now where we can at least say we are heading in the right direction step by step. This is something new. We should not expect it's going to be 100% perfect off the bat, but we will get there. Yes. Um, A couple of things. One, uh, and most importantly, I do see uh, good uh, steps being taken towards uh, herd immunity. And I feel like people just sit down now and thinking, all right, you know what? We need a good res- uh, reset button. And of course, new administration is coming in. And I am very, very optimistic that uh, the rollout is going to get a lot faster than it did. Mm-hmm. Another thing is, don't forget, even when we roll this out, we actually said, hey, let's vaccinate the uh, healthcare workers there first and the um, you know uh, people who are in uh, nursing homes, and then um, slowly this and that. Don't forget, we actually con- uh, controlled how we rolled out. That's why it kind of felt like it's slow, 
But now when we uh, change our criteria and include more people, I believe uh, it's going to be a lot faster. Mm-hmm. And I'm very, very optimistic that, uh, optimistic that uh, towards the end of this year, we'll have some sort of normalcy. Mm-hmm. I just spoke to a teacher I know on Long Island, and she's out in the Hamptons, and she's willing to go anywhere <laughs> to go get that vaccine. Now, she has called facilities at Stony Brook, mm-hmm. in Syosset, at Jones Beach, where we have a mass inoculation center and mm-hmm. other places around Long Island. And she just, for the past few days, just told me, I can't get in. I believe she called Jones Beach. Jones Beach told her we have a few spots open. She went online. And by the time she did that, they were all gone. So she's going to try again starting on Monday. This is something, this system is something we have to rectify too, I would think. That is correct. That is correct. And hopefully that will be uh, because uh, right now, obviously, uh, social being social distant and um Bearing your masks and now adding the um, vaccination, we will get uh, out of this. We have to get out of this. Your patients around Westchester as a nurse practitioner, how are they reacting to getting or having to get the vaccine? Are they pretty positive about this? Uh, surprisingly, uh, very positive. Um, I did obviously any, like any other, uh, provider I did here, here and there. Hey, I don't really trust. I let me, uh, see how p- other people are doing with it. And then, uh, I'll check it out. But the more you talk to people, they listen, they listen. If you lay out the truth, if you lay out the, um, data and if you, uh, educate them, they, they trust you. That's why healthcare providers have an incredibly important role in this uh, vaccination efforts. Mm-hmm. Just talk to your patients and then tell them what this vaccination is and how it's going to affect you, how it's going to affect your life. And I have a feeling that they are going to follow. People like you have an incredible, important role, very incredibly important role, I think, in disseminating the word about the vaccine. That is correct. And I'm taking it very, very seriously. Mm-hmm. I can tell there's no doubt about that. Thank you. Thank you for doing that, too. And thank you for being with us here today on Westchester Talk Radio. Orhan Hotley, Associate Dean at Manhattanville College in Purchase and a nurse practitioner around Westchester as well. Thank you for joining us here on Westchester Talk Radio. All the best to you. Thank you, for, uh, thank you for having me, John. You thank have a good day. Much appreciated. And we on Westchester Talk Radio here. On the Beat in Westchester is our show here, and we are presented by, produced by Shark Creative, made possible by our good friends at Entergy, the Indian Point Energy Center, supporting our communities right through April of 2021. Also, Wartburg Healthcare and Rehabilitation in Mount Vernon, Park Sterling Realty in Bronxville, and Michael Labriola Landscape Design and Construction in Arma. Catch all of our Westchester, Fairfield County, Putnam and Dutchess talk radio programming on our YouTube channel, Shark Creative YouTube. 